Righto. We're looking today at a one piece, uh, pretty user serviceable, pretty easy to pick up, field sharpening device for under 70 Australian dollars that isn't evil. How good's that? Pretty rare so far on this channel. This is a very good device. I can tell you that from the outset. This is a good one, folks. This is the WorkSharp Field Sharpener. So unlike the smaller WorkSharp uh, Pocket Field Sharpener, a lot of people asked in that review, why aren't you doing this one? And my answer was simple. This, that, were, that big video I did about a week and a half ago, that was about sharpeners that are sold as pocket sharpeners. This is just a bit too big and bulky. It's still very small and compact, but for a pocket sharpener, no, but there was so much interest and so much suggestion that I picked one of these up and I've used it for a few days and I've sharpened several knives on it and it is great. And I see what you're all saying. Excellent little tool, $64 or so from Knife Shop AU for a relatively complete um, sharpening kit that even as a beginner, I think this is about where you should start. Don't start on pull through sharpeners. Get them for your mum to sharpen her you know, Wilshire kitchen knives. That's what they're for. Uh, this is where I think most folks who don't know how to sharpen should start. There is guides to help you. There is good abrasives to do it properly for you. Let's get into it. I'll show you how it works up close and we'll sharpen two different knives, two different kinds of knives, and I'll show you a full sharpening with each so you get an idea of how it works. So work sharp, field sharpener. It's this one here. So this is the field sharpener and it's got lots of things you can do with it. So let's do a bit of a walk around. So for a start, when you turn it on its side, you'll see that it's a relatively symmetrical device. That means you can place it down flat on a surface, it sits relatively, it sits perfectly flat pretty much. And then you can use these two guides here to start your sharpening angle from, simply by resting the knife against there. And then you're still gonna have to have some steady hand, but that's a skill you're gonna have to learn if you're gonna freehand sharpen. So get your angle right, and then to your best of your ability, you pull the knife across, right? Now, one of the things I always wanted to know is how much steady hand this need, do you need? And you need a little bit, you do. It's not, you know, you could set it perfectly on the guide, then be like, Bleh, you know, so you have to be you know, steady about it, of course. But it does set for a good first timers or, you know, I guess, you know, obviously field sharpener's angle, which is 20 degrees. So if you've got like a 17 degree micro bevel on your knife, putting a 20 degree further bevel on there isn't going to be a disaster. It's going to keep it sharp enough in the field. Then when you get home, you know, you can erase that again with your 17 degree kit or whatever you're doing it. This is an outdoor knife, so you should be running this. Well, not should, but I'd run this at about 20 degrees. It's currently running at 17 because of my knife testing, but 20 degrees is a completely sound angle for a good quality steel outdoor knife. If you're using a softer steel or a, or a crummier steel, then maybe 20, 25, but 20 degrees, absolutely fine for an outdoor knife. So that's what these two parts are here, these two yellow parts, they're the guides, and they are on both sides. Why is there two sides? You can probably see the slight darker, more sort of glittery uh, sheen there, that means this is a coarser plate. So you can take these off, these are held in place with magnets, this is the coarse plate. You take the other one off. This is the fine plate. See? So, it's a very sort of all-in-one, well-designed system. You can even keep stuff in here. It's like a little compartment. Very cool. So, you've got two actual sharpening plates. Then, along here, you've got a ceramic rod, or two ceramic rods, actually, that has a setting knob there. So, you see there's F... C and a fish hook. So F is for fine. That's the one that you'll be using the most. So when that's on, so when the F is to the top, it's fine. Turn it around. Now you've got a fish hook groove. So you can put the head of your fish hook and drag it across there if your fish hooks are dull. Now that's something that I, I generally don't have a fish hook. I don't have any heirloom fish hooks in this house. Fish hooks don't last much more than a couple of fishing sessions. So uh, that's a little bit redundant for me, but there you go. And this is they call the coarse rod. So the coarse rod is slightly corrugated there. And I don't know, I, I haven't had any compulsion to use that either. The, the fine ceramic rod, especially after using the fine diamond plate, is enough for me. And then there's a smaller um, rod here, which you could use on all sorts of things. 
like you could bring the tool to things, use it on arrowheads, you could use it on bigger knives, you could use it. It's a bit of just a honing, a bit of a honing stone there. It's the same sort of ceramic as this one here though. So there you go. Uh, look, on the bottom here is probably what I think is the, probably the most useful part of the whole thing. I know it's funny because it's on a relatively complex device and you could always just use your belt, but this is great. A leather strop is something to have in the field with you all the time. It's what's gonna do most of your sharpening in my opinion. And then lifting up the plate again, you'll see some interesting shapes there. I don't know archery, but apparently those are things for archery to get arrows off. And there you go. I I won't talk about anything anything more to do with that because I don't know anything more to do with that. But there you go. It has those archery features as well. <laughs> so there you go. Overall, a really well designed tool. But yes, this is definitely where I think you should start because it's going to do some basic teaching of you about how to use uh, an angled system or a freehand angled concept. So uh, let's get into it. So first things first, it's good that this, these are sort of rubberized for a couple of reasons. So you can hold it and move it about easily, but also because it stays relatively still on a desk without having to, you know, maybe put a, a damp towel down underneath. So say with a, with stones sometimes, especially with your finer stones, they're quite, they slide around quite, quite easily. This has just got enough rubberization to make it sit pretty happily. So you only really need to hold it with one hand. Best way to do it is in your um, support hands, just have it so you can hold it by this part and I generally just use the same hands and go push across across. So this is the Lion Steel B40 Bushcraft knife in Slepner Steel. It's got a patchy edge at best. So part of it's sharp, sharp still. I think right at the heel it's still sharp-ish and then it loses its sharpness towards there. Because I use this for edge testing. I think I cut, did a coconut test with it. So yeah, it needs a new edge entirely. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna flip it over we're going to start on this more rough um, stone here. We're going to put a 20 degree bevel back on it and we'll get this paper slicing again, I promise you. So just to the best I can, and you know what? Again, it's a field sharpener. This isn't a dialed in KME. This is going to do as good as you can do. And you get, you really do get better at being steady. You really do. So you're going to go with this 20 degree guide. You're going to put the knife on it so it just feels like it's nice and nested against there. You're going to sort of lock your arm in a little bit, you know, you don't need to tense up or anything, but just kind of remember this angle, you know, and then you're just going to kind of pull across, all right, you're going to settle it and you're going to pull across. You're going to try and get all the way to the tip in one pass, so otherwise you have to revisit and do separate ones, so you're going to just pull across, pull across. Five per side. This is pretty rough stone, so it should do your cutting quite rapidly. So you're holding again, just it's just about repeating it. It's it is an acquired thing that you need to just practice, but you get there, all right? And again, it doesn't have to be so perfect. You know, if once in the field, if one side's twenty two degrees and one side's eighteen degrees, whatever, it's still gonna cut for you until you get home, you know? See, that one I just wonked, but you know what? It's not the end of the world. Yeah, good positive feedback. You can feel the stuff working against the blade and you can see this kind of eventually get a little bit darker as you get some steel powder on there. you find you are pretty good at eyeballing these things. Like you really do. You, you'll know when you do a wobbly one. And as I said, you're just putting a micro bevel on. You're not trying to do the whole shiny apex there. You're just trying to get that last little bit of edge working again, yeah?
So this was quite a dull knife and it needed basically a full restore. So I can definitely feel it's formed a ragged, I'd say about a 400 grit or so edge now. And it has. So that's much better already and it's still barely formed. There'd be some burring on there as well, so I wouldn't want to cut too long because the burr will eventually choose a side and then crumple and you'll have a dull spot. But for that stage in sharpening, that's good. Switching over to the finer plate. Sharpening used to be really imposing to me. I guess I made peace with the fact that once a knife's dull and you know bad to use, what, 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 what worse can I really do to it, you know? And I'm sure, yeah, sure I can do a lot worse, and I have in the past, but that's usually when I've knowingly been overly curious. Really, as long as you're doing a basic adherence to an angle as best you can, you're not gonna wreck the knife. You can always go and pick up some guided system or something, or send it off to someone, I guess, if you really make a, a, a dog's breakfast of it, but really, it gets to a point where you just have to try, you know? Just gotta do it. So this will be making those little grooves that sharpening makes in the edge. This will be making them much closer together. Because really, every edge is actually a serrated edge when you think about it because they are all just little crystal carbides that are sharp and nasty like little nasty pointy teeth um it's really just them doing a micro serration cutting so this is making them closer and closer together so they've got less stress around them making for a longer lasting sharper edge when they meet abrasive materials Plenty of passes, I would say, to have given me a slightly finer edge once again. So let's see how that's looking now. Already feeling better again. Like when you slide through the paper, even less um, juddery, sort of teary sensation, right? So now we move on to the third abrasive, which is this uh, rod here. And again, it's a 20 degree guide. And this one is really just, I, I use this maybe five times per side. This is just a bit of burr management and a little bit of honing. I find this strop does most of, the, most of the rest of it. Just like that. You know it's working because you'll see a gray line appear on the, on the uh, cone there. really do for that stage. That really is just for me, I always just see that as tidying. Sometimes it actually has a, sometimes, and I'm just cutting, so I'm just going to keep it going again. Sometimes I find it actually weakens the edge for a second. It's actually okay, but yeah, the that don't stop at that. This drop, this drop is so important, I think, because that often just knocks the burr. The strop for me with compound, I think, is what removes the the problematic burr, and that's just me. It's how I've always felt about sharpening that a stropped comp, a compounded strop is what really does that breaking off any ratty bits of burr, and this is much less precise. 
because really it's soft leather. It's not really removing material at all. It removes a tiny bit, of course, everything removes a tiny bit. But yeah, just best of your eyeball, as long as that right, as long as the absolute terminating edge is going against this, you're absolutely fine. Try and be as, you know, even as you can, but yeah. And this has Workshops compound in it already. It's got like a green compound that comes with it. But of course, once that seems to be running out, you can just put some olive oil on it. That'll lift the compound and you can wipe it down. And then you'll have a pretty raw strip of leather that you can start again with, with a compound of your choice. Right. I am pretty happy to say, sight unseen, test untested, that that is gonna be a great edge now. And it is. Again, complete night and day to how I started the knife. This is a 60 Rockwell D2 variant steel, so not the easiest stuff in the world to sharpen. But within, my phone is saying 10 minutes and 55 seconds. I've done a full sharpening job on this knife to a point where I'd be happy to have this for the rest of a trip, or even just if this was your only sharpening system, a perfectly decent edge that maybe every few weeks you have to do another 10 minutes on, you know? Pretty darn good. So that was a full sharpening. Thanks for sticking with it. I thought it might be good to show you everything without any speed ups. What I'll do now is I'll show you a completely different kind of knife, a kitchen knife with a much longer blade sharpened on the same system. This is my uh, Falcon even K2 kitchen knife. It's absolutely wrecked. This, we, our kitchen knives get abused. They do, they get put in the dishwasher, they get, you know, they cut whatever they need to cut. So this needs a massive edge restore. So we're gonna see if I can do it with it. Only the uh, guided field sharpener and I'll talk about how easy or hard or impossible it was afterwards. So let's see how we go. completely ruined and I'm talking slightly rusted out, notched out edge to gliding through paper once again, using this little field sharpener. So it's, this isn't even a proper home sharpening system. Very, very capable, really, really recommended so far. This is something that I would really recommend to anyone, even if you are, um, you know, a proper stone sharpener, like you're one of those guys, um, there's a few of the few great ones on Instagram I follow, Make the Pre, um, Triple B, Michael Christie, even you guys, I reckon if you go out and about, unless you're bringing, unless you bring a little stone with you and you absolutely love it, this is just great for... I can't think of anyone who would hate this, who would dislike this openly, because it not only teaches sharpening techniques, the fundamentals, it guides you as best as you know it can without doing it for you. And you know, often those sort of systems have their own problems, the ones that do them for you, because they're often mechanized and they're often a bit too aggressive or they're pull through or whatever. So it's about the perfect entry point, I believe. Really positive review very much a a key tool and it's a great sort of backpacking tool it's not the heaviest it's not sorry the lightest thing in the world it's got some weight to it but it's that weight that kind of feels like it's quality more than anything um 
and it's much, much more uh, fully formed than the pocket sharpener, which I'll show you uh, next to it, I guess, right now on the screen. Uh, it's got so much more to it that um, it really is a great deal, especially for about $70-ish. Um, you're looking, the next sort of step up, you're going to start getting your lower end uh, table sharpeners, uh, which is probably, there's a larger workshop version of this with sort of a rotatable stone that's about $110 or so. And they're also doing a Spyderco-ish system now as well. And then of course you do have things like the Sharp Maker. Um, and then above that sort of, you've got your KMEs, you've got your Wicked Edges, your things that are usually going to be about $300 and quite fussy. But a great entry point into the market. Great sharpening tool, really recommend it. Not evil at all. So good job, Workshop. This is the stuff um, that the world needs more of.